Hey y'all, we're gonna finish the last topic in chapter six. So it's actually not a new topic. It's just a specific example of a topic we've already talked about. And so this is enthalpy of formation. So we're still talking about enthalpy. We're talking about enthalpies of a specific reaction. So if we were to write this, it would be delta H, just like we've been talking about all, all along, but it's for a specific reaction. And the reaction is a formation reaction. Okay, so usually you'll see it as delta H of formation or delta H F would be delta H of formation. So again, this just links formation or enthalpy to a specific reaction, and that specific reaction is formation. So um, again, this is this is kind of something we've talked about earlier in the chapter. If they give you something like delta H of formation of a specific molecule, let's say CO, I think was an example we used before, you should be able to write the actual reaction that um, this delta H is tied to or is representative of. Even if they just give you a molecule, you should know that it's the formation of that molecule and be able to write that reaction. So that's kind of what I want to cover right now is what is that reaction? What does that look like? Um, <clears throat> okay, so delta H of formation let me just delete this real fast and we can kind of start new. So a lot of times you'll see delta HF just like we had it. And then you'll see this naught or this degree symbol in the top. So delta HF naught is actually representing a specific reaction under specific conditions. So this little naught means standard conditions. <clears throat> which we know to mean temperature and pressure already, right? 25 degrees Celsius, one atmosphere of pressure. But it also indicates a specific amount, and that amount is going to be for one mole. So it's for a specific reaction, if you see that F down there, and it's also under specific conditions, if you see that little not symbol at the top. <clears throat> Okay, now it's of formation. So this comes with specific specifications as well. So first of all, you're going to be forming the compound that is indicated. So if it's delta HF not of CO, okay, CO is what's being formed. And again, it's being formed under standard conditions which means you're only forming one mole. So no matter what you, how you balance this equation, you need to balance this equation so that the coefficient in front of your molecule is a one, one mole of your compound that you're forming. Um, okay, the other thing about a formation reaction is you're gonna be forming it from the elements. So you, you just evaluate whatever your compound is and you take the elemental form of everything involved in your compound. So elemental form of carbon is C, elemental form of oxygen is O2. Now again, we need to balance this equation so that we have a coefficient of one in front of there. Now normally, if I was going to balance this, normally what I would do is I would double this and double this, right? And that's how it would be balanced, but we don't want a coefficient of two there. And so if you balance it like normal, the way you can get back to a coefficient of one there is just by dividing everything by whatever is already there, whatever that coefficient is. So the coefficient that I have used for carbon monoxide is a two. So I'm just gonna divide everything by two, which means now I have one carbon, I have a half in oxygen, and it, that goes to one, carbon monoxide. So this is the formation reaction. This, before I divide it by two, is not the formation reaction. 
it's not the formation reaction because the coefficients are off. It's double whatever the formation reaction is. So now we can look in our <clears throat> book and we can go to the appendix in the back of the book. And somewhere around page 21 of the appendix is this giant table of thermodynamic, selected thermodynamic data. And notice that in this giant thing of selected thermodynamic data, which goes on for a couple pages, um, it has a whole bunch of substances and state, remember, Enthalpy is state dependent, so you have to be careful about the state. Um, and then it also has delta H naught F in kilojoules per mole. So what I have to do here is I have to go find carbon monoxide. Now, again, it's state dependent. We're going to say it's gaseous carbon monoxide. Okay. Uh, all the things are alphabetized. C, C, R, C, hmm. Come on, carbon monoxide. Oh, here we go. It's under carbon right here. Carbon, carbon monoxide gas. Okay, so it's delta H naught F. Delta H F naught is negative 110.5. Let me write that down. Negative 110.5, and that's in kilojoules per mole. Notice it's per mole. So again, if I was going to double it to two moles, I would have to multiply that by two, right? So you can find the delta HF of this formation reaction. Notice it's not a standard delta HF, and it would be double. So 220, actually 221.0, negative kilojoules. So I've multiplied by two moles and that gets rid of my denominator of the mole in the unit. Okay. So I think that covers almost everything as far as like the conditions under which the enthalpy of formation is going to be communicated. So delta HF naught, just as a recap, the Little naught or degree symbol means it's standard, standard temperature, which is 25 degrees Celsius, standard pressure, which is one atmosphere, and standard amount, which is one mole of the compound that you're forming. When you write the reaction, you have to go from the elements, element, elemental forms of all of the atoms involved, those are going to be your reactants. Your product is going to be the one molecule you're forming. Um, and the whole reaction has to be balanced if it's under standard conditions so that there's one mole of your product. Okay, so we can see a couple examples on this page. You can see delta HF for carbon. Graphite carbon is zero. Delta HF for hydrogen gas is zero. Delta HF of oxygen gas is zero. And that's because these are the elemental forms of those compounds. Now, um, Delta HF for other forms of carbon, interestingly enough, even other solid forms are not going to be zero. And we'll actually look at one of these examples coming up. Um, so why are they all zero? Why are the enthalpy of formation zero? Because remember, the enthalpy of formation is a reaction that goes from the elemental form to your product. Well, these things are in the elemental form already. So there's no, nothing, no energy that has to be put in or taken out in order to change them into their elemental form. They're already there, and so it's just going to be zero. Okay. Um, a good check at this point in time would be to look at a couple different uh, equations, like like that one, and ask yourself, is this a formation reaction? 
now would be a good time to pause the video and see if you can come up with uh, a claim evidence reason for that. Is this a formation reaction? And your answer should be no, because the reactants are not elements. Well, actually one of them is, but the other one is not. Not elements, so automatically it can't be formation. Uh, second reason is you're not forming one thing. You're forming two things. In a formation reaction, you're always only going to form one thing. So no, this is not a formation reaction. It would be a combustion reaction. So if they're giving you the enthalpy of that reaction, it'll be the enthalpy of combustion or the enthalpy of reaction. All right, so um, again, uh, standard enthalpies of formation can be found in the back of your book. Um, you can also look them up online. They're in a whole bunch of indexes. They're very well documented. Um, they're very well standardized. Most of the places that you see, you're going to find very similar enthalpies of formation. Um, okay, so a good practice at this point in time would be to take one of these. Let's say... Mm -hmm. Let's do this one. Aluminum oxide. Okay, write the formation reaction for this compound and go. Again, good time to pause it. Okay, and there you go. That is the formation reaction for aluminum oxide. Okay. Um, so this just kind of recaps what we talked about before. Uh, remember that enthalpy is dependent on the amount of product that's there. So you have to balance it so that there's one mole of product form like this top reaction does. It balances so that there's one, one mole of nitrogen dioxide. Same thing here. Notice it's balanced so that there's one mole of methanol. Um, Okay, so down here, here's the deal. Here's why we, we make such a big fuss about enthalpies of formation, because they're really, really, really convenient. So we have been dealing with Hess's law, right? So uh, Hess's law is talking about how um, because certain things are pathway independent, like total energy, or enthalpy, which is total energy under constant pressure, right? Because these things are pathway independent, it really doesn't matter what pathway we use to calculate them. We can use the real pathway, or we can use a pathway that's convenient to us. So let's look at this reaction down be below. Here we come across our favorite overused reaction so far in chemistry, which is the combustion of methane. Um, so again, this is not a formation reaction. We can't just go look this up in the back of the book and find an enthalpy of formation for this. What we need for this, if we want to know the enthalpy of this reaction, we need to either do the experiment and measure the enthalpy of combustion or the enthalpy of reaction for this specific reaction, or we can use reactions we already know the enthalpy for, and we can calculate it, right? That's Hess's law. So um, the nice thing about enthalpies of formation, our enthalpies of formation can be used in this way. 
So let me show you this. All right. Um, you're going to go to the back of your book. You're going to look up enthalpies for methane, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water. And we're going to write out the formation reactions for all of these. So take a minute, pause this video, write out the formation reaction for all of these compounds, and then go look up the entho standard enthalpies of formation for these molecules and go. All right, there's all the formation reactions. Okay, and notice this is H2O, not H, H2O liquid, not H2O gas. Okay, so like I, like I said, I don't really know how this reaction proceeds. Does methane get broken apart into atoms and then those atoms combine with oxygen? Um, does the oxygen attach to the methane to form an intermediate and then it falls apart? I don't really know how this reaction actually proceeds, but it doesn't matter because enthalpy is pathway independent. So I can pretend like this proceeds any way I want and then I can put those uh, convenient pathways together to form as, as long as I form this overall reaction. So that's what I am going to do. So look at my available uh, reactions up there, and we're going to build the reaction that we want. So I'm going to look at this first one. I want methane. Here, let me use a different color. I want methane right? But I want methane as a reactant, not a product. In the current reaction that I have for methane, methane's a product. I want it as a reactant. So I'm going to have to flip this. Now I want one methane and I have one methane, so I don't have to multiply it. So all I'm going to do is flip it. CH4 goes to C plus 2H2. give myself some room also. All right, since I flipped it, the enthalpy of formation is also going to flip. So plus 75 instead of minus 75. Okay, oxygen doesn't really matter. We can add as much or as little oxygen as we want because the enthalpy for that is zero. So I'm just going to skip oxygen for now. All right, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, I want one of them, and I want it as a product. If I look at the reaction that has carbon dioxide in it, I currently have that carbon dioxide as a product, and I currently have it as one. So I'm just going to keep that one like it is.
All right, and then water. I want water as a product. Water up here is a product. I want two waters. Here I only have one water. So I'm going to keep the reaction as is. I'm not going to flip it, but I am going to multiply it. So 2H2 plus a half times 2 is 1O2 goes to 2H2O. And if I'm going to multiply the reaction, I'm also going to multiply the enthalpy. Negative 286. Now, if all I care about is the enthalpy at this point in time, I can just add them together and call it good. But I want to show you uh, how this actually works out. So if I'm going to add things together, um, the first thing I'm going to do before I add them is I'm going to eliminate things that show up on both sides. So I have a carbon here. I have a carbon here. One reactant, one product. They're going to reduce each other out. Uh, does anything else do that? I have an H2 and an H2. Okay, and they're going to reduce each other out. I'll slash it the other way so you can kind of see the difference. Okay, now nothing else reduces out, so then I'm just going to write them down below. CH4, 2O2, CO2, 2H2O. Notice, as long as my um, reactions can add up to the overall reaction, the pathway doesn't matter. Okay, so I get my overall reaction. Now I want my overall enthalpy. Okay, negative eight nine zero point five. Okay, question here: What would the units be? This would be a good time to pause and see if you can take a stab at it and see if we agree. So, the units of enthalpy of formation, standard enthalpies of formation, are kilojoules per mole. But we have manipulated all of these by multiplying them by how many times we want this. And so we have multiplied by the mole of reactions that we want. And so that mole in the denominator gets reduced out and my units are left as kilojoules. There we go. Enthalpy of formation for this specific reaction. Ta-da! Okay, so um, as you can see on here, this is just a little graphic trying to explain the same thing that I just said. Um, here are my reactants, methane and oxygen. And I'm just going to take any convenient pathway, right? I don't have to actually find the reactions for the actual pathway of what happens. I can do any convenient pathway. So I can pretend that methane splits and then the hydrogens and the oxygens get redistributed, and then they bond with this O2 to form my products. Okay, so that's essentially what I'm doing down here by, you know, flipping, taking the formation reactions, flipping them, multiplying by two. I'm creating my own convenient pathway. So this is Hess's law. It's just Hess's law using formation reactions. Now here, here's the catch. There's a shortcut. You don't actually have to write out all the formation reactions like we just did, flip them and add them together. You can trust that as you evaluate this, um, you're, you are um, using the formation reactions and the formation reactions are all going to add up together. So there is a shortcut to doing what we just did. And the shortcut is this. So if you take your reaction, and you look up the formation amounts for all of these like we just did. Oh, 
Okay, so I know these are all the amounts. When these compounds are products formed from their reactants, right? So I don't actually have to write the reactions out. I can kind of do it logically. Okay, so methane, this is the enthalpy for when methane is a product. In this reaction, it's not a product. It is a reactant. And so I'm going to flip the sign for this. All right, I want carbon dioxide as a product. It is a product in what I, in this amount that I look up in our book. Um, so I'm just going to keep it the same. Okay, the, the water that I look up in the back of the book for its enthalpy value, water is a product in the formation reaction, uh, but it's a standard formation reaction for one mole. I want two moles. And so I'm going to multiply this by two. Okay, when I add all of these up, I get the overall enthalpy for that specific reaction. Notice I just did the exact same process that we did on the last slide, but I did it in a fraction of the time. So you can write them all out and then figure out how the values are manipulated, add all the reactions together, add all the enthalpy to together. Or if all you care about is the enthalpy, you can just walk through this logically, what you, taking what you know from the formation and applying it to either flipping the sign, multiplying it, and doing things like that. Now there is a third option here, and the third option is to plug and chug in a formula. The formula is gonna do the exact same thing. Okay, so here's the formula. I want to show this to you. Take a minute, write it down. We'll go back to the last slide, and I'll show you how this applies. While you're writing it down, let me explain a couple of things to you. First of all, this sign is a sigma, and that means sum. This sign, you might recognize from the gas law chapter, it is moles. And then this is enthalpy of the products, and this is enthalpy of the reactants. Standard enthalpy of formation for all the products, standard enthalpy formation for all the reactants. Okay, now let me show you how this works. All right, I'll write that equation out. So delta H of the reaction is the sum multiply by the moles of the enthalpy of the product minus the sum times the moles of the enthalpy of the reactants. Okay, so what this says to you is you have to add up all your products, uh, enthalpy of formation, after you multiply them by the moles. So we can do this. Let's do it for carbon dioxide, negative 394, and then we're going to add it to the enthalpy of the, of the water, negative 286. And we have to multiply by the moles. That's what this N means. You're multiplying by the moles. So water has to be multiplied by 2. Okay, so that is the sum of all the enthalpies of my products multiplied by their amounts in moles. And then I'm going to subtract the same thing from the reactants. So I'm gonna take the reactants, so negative 75 for methane. I don't have to multiply it by any moles because I just want one of those. And I actually don't have to add an oxygen here because oxygen's just zero. So this is the sum of all the reactants. And now notice if you type this into your calculator, you get negative 891 kilojoules. So it's a formula that allows you to plug and chug without thinking through the logic. And why does it work? Because the formula does the logic for you. So notice there is a negative sign here in front of the reactant. So as we processed through it logically, we said, okay, my reactant, methane, I'm gonna go look up the enthalpy of formation. 
But for this enthalpy of formation, the formation reaction, methane is a product, but I want it as a reactant, so I'm going to flip the sign. Well, that's exactly what this negative sign does for you. It flips the sign for you. Okay, so you are welcome to use this reaction or this equation. Um, I believe it is on your reference sheet. Definitely go look that up. If it's not on your reference sheet, you do have to memorize it. And you do have to understand the formula well enough so that you plug into it correctly. Again, three ways of doing this. Write out all the equations and add them up. Process through it logically, which is my favorite because it avoids equations and remembering them. Use the equation. Just plug and chug into the equation. So three different ways of finding the overall enthalpy for a reaction from all the given enthalpies of formation. Okay, and all we have left at this point in time are uh, problems we're gonna try together in class. So that's it, that's chapter six. We'll do some practice together in class. We'll review, we'll take this quiz. Great job, see you in class.